All right, so what are we going to talk about here? What are visual effects and special effects? That's pretty important because before we even get into this, we have to define together what it is we're talking about. We have to come up with a definition of what visual effects and special effects are. And a lot of people think that's oh, all the same thing, right? No. Visual effects is actually different than special effects, and together we'll go over that. We're going to talk about when to call on visual effects. There's some uh, pretty important and, and pretty opportune times when, uh, of course, people of our craft are needed. We're going to talk about visual effects supporting on-set special effects throughout the lecture course. We're going to talk about VFX pipelines, technology, studios, artist roles. Those are some of the things that a lot of new uh, VFX uh, students want to know about. What are the, uh, the jobs that you can do and what's expected of you in those jobs? What, what's the kind, uh, different kind of studios that are out there? that you may want to work for and where are, where are they in the world. Different technology. When we talk about pipelines, by the way, uh, we're not talking about like some oil pipeline. We're talking about the process of getting work done. And that's pretty important. So we'll talk about all about that stuff as well. We're going to talk about milestones and history of visual effects and special effects. There's lots of watershed moments that occurred um, that we definitely want to be aware of. We're going to break down into detail various types of visual effects, how it's all done. If you ever wanted to know uh, really what goes into a stop, uh, stop action movie, stop motion movie, um, we're going to talk about that. Um, miniatures, we're going to talk about all kinds of good stuff. So it's, uh, it's going to be a good time. But there's more. In the course sections, here's what we're going to do. Section one, obviously, is the introduction. This is us. Okay. Section two, miniatures. You may recognize that miniature right now. It played a very large role in eight very famous movies. Uh, we'll talk about those. Section three, animatronics and puppets. If you know, if you recognize who this little character is, that's Gizmo from a 1980s film uh, Steven Spielberg produced, Gremlins. Great film. We will talk about rear and front screen projection. This is really important because a lot of people are like, well, do they still do that? Absolutely, they still do that. And what's interesting is the process of rear screen and front screen projection um, kind of fell by the wayside a little bit as, as the advent of digital technology, green screen, blue screen, that kind of a thing. Um, but now it's coming back in a big, big way. If you're familiar with a show called The Mandalorian and everyone seems to be building their own uh, volume screens. We'll talk about those volume uh, screens as well and what goes into building those. And it's not just a point and click. It's not a plug-and-play thing. There's a lot that's going on in there. And it's not cheap either. Um, by the way, that's a movie, uh, Cary Grant, um, North by Northwest. If you're a Hitchcock fan, check out North by Northwest. We will be talking about stop motion. If you know who they are, those are the box trolls. Uh, Leica plays a big role in stop motion. But there's other players that we will talk about as well uh, and how they do that. We would talk about matte paintings, of course. Matte paintings are one of the oldest techniques of visual effects. And uh, they, uh, they have a long, wonderful history of basically selling the idea that the actors are somewhere that they are not. Right? And if you recognize this shot, those of you who love uh, cinematic movies and adventure films, that's one of the end shots from 1981's. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Ark of the Covenant is hidden somewhere in all those crazy boxes. Hidden away by the government. Section 7, we're going to talk about set extensions, which is pretty close to map paintings, but it's like the uh, new digital version of map paintings. And it allows the camera to do anything uh, it wants to do. Before, when there was just map paintings, when they were literally paintings, now they're all, of course, Photoshop and, and Nuke and stuff like that. The camera was very limited to what it could do. Because if you move the camera around too much, uh, the map painting is going to fall apart. It's going to look like an illusion, look like painting on, on glass or a card or something. Set extensions kind of breaks that mold uh, and helps the creative directors and, and artists get just the kind of camera movement they want. If you're wondering, that's a pretty obscure shot, but that is a Johnny Depp movie. Uh, by Tim Burton, and that is called Dark Shadows, if you're wondering what that one is from. And there's a set extension going on right in that shot right there. We will be talking about invisible effects. This is a shot of a very young Michael Douglas, but he was much older when he shot this, of course. 
Um, and this is a shot from Ant-Man. So invisible effects plays a huge role. And it's not just for what we call tentpole, Marvel, DC, uh, visual effects extravaganza films of the summer. Visual effects uh, with invisible effects are everywhere. You may not even realize it's there, obviously, because it's invisible. But it could be some, something, uh, something as simple as, I don't like that sunset. Give me a new sunset. Or why is that tree in the shot? Or the catering crew is in the shot. Or we see a reflection of ourselves in the movie. we got to get rid of that. Or maybe a performer didn't like their work, but they like to take two of their performance and take three of their facial response to something. Why not combine them? So there's all kinds of cool little tricks and invisible effects that we will talk about. Section 9 is motion graphics. If you're a fan of the way movies start, intro sequences, heads-up displays, credit sequences, all kinds of fun stuff. This is a shot from uh, Ridley Scott's Prometheus movie. This is a really cool concept of, I believe it was a navigational um, part of a, a spaceship, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but what a great way to show, you know, the scope of the universe and, this, and, the, and the power and technology of this race. All done with motion graphics, of course. We'll talk about the tools, we'll talk about um, you know, what's needed to create those, and those are everywhere, especially in science fiction, because, you know, spaceships need user interfaces or all kinds of fun stuff, holograms, so that's pretty popular. Dynamic effects we will be talking about. This is a shot from one of the new Ghostbuster films. Uh, we were going back in time a bit when all the dynamic effects was hand-drawn. Uh, you know, the, the precursor to all the digital effects was, of course, the hand-drawn animation from, from Disney and other people. Um, but we're going to talk about how they do the stuff now and the different tools, Maya, Houdini, all kinds of good stuff like that as well, to get those uh, accomplished. If you're a fan of shots where, I don't know, usually there's always a, another end-of-the-world movie happening every, every, you know, summer or so, and a tidal wave is smashing Hong Kong or New York or whatever um those are dynamically generated effects and those are the things that we're talking about in that section what else do we have well of course computer generated characters if you know this very angry man here he uh he's obviously the hulk and he doesn't really exist so obviously you have to call visual effects to realize the hulk on screen uh and they're just they're mind-blowing with their realism nowadays not just the realism of the amazing talents of the digital sculptors and the rendering engines and the look development that's going on to make these things look believable and real, but it's also the real-time character work that just looks stunning with the new uh, Unreal Engine, the, you know, the versions that are coming out, just really gorgeous stuff. Um, and that's always being updated constantly. Great stuff. And then if there's computer-generated characters. Well, there's got to be computer-generated environments, and this is, of course, Tron. If you've seen the latest Tron, I believe they're doing another one pretty soon. I'm a big fan of all of, uh, of Tron, and, and the first one came out, I believe, in 1982. Check it out by Disney, uh, if you've never seen it. Um, pretty big moment for special effects and visual effects. Um, this is one of the newer ones, and of course, computer-generated environments. Of course, the whole environment is, is all in the computer. But what goes into something like that, from concept to modeling to lighting to look dove to there's dynamic effects in there, there's fog, you know, it, it actually is motivated and re, um, responsive to the vehicles flying through it. Compositing, rendering, there's all kinds of uh, pieces to these puzzles to make things happen. And we're going to talk all about that stuff. Those are our course sections.